Hello everyone. OpenAI real-time audio generation LLM model is a game changer for human-like voice conversation. Now you don't have to worry about audio to text or text to audio conversion, which adds the lag into your application. I have already created two videos where a web app is deployed using which you can initiate the voice conversation with OpenAI real-time API. And in another video, I have added RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation using Azure AI Search. And the responses from the LLM are based on the private data itself. But one of the most useful use case of Azure OpenAI Real-Time API is to integrate it with the phone number, where the businesses can adapt it and provide a first level voice response. For example, you want to book an appointment with a medical practitioner or your doctor then what you have to do is to call the medical center and there you will talk to the receptionist she will find all the details and then you will make the appointment but now instead of the receptionist you can call on the number and the voice conversation will be with the real-time api and then all the details and the scheduling can happen using that you just have to add the action where it will make an appointment in the google calendar or outlook calendar or some other third-party application so in short, if you can integrate the OpenAI real-time API with the phone number, then there are endless opportunities for the different businesses. So in this video, I'll show how to integrate Azure OpenAI real-time API with the Twilio phone number. So let's start with the step-by-step -step deployment. I'm logged into Azure portal now, and I'll start with the creation of Azure OpenAI service. So let's go to Azure OpenAI and create a new service. We know that real-time API is available only in two regions in Azure. One is East US2 and another one is France Central. So I'll deploy the resources in East US2. So let's create a resource group, RG phone and East US2. And let's name it as shell in the open AI 001 and standard as zero. It's already in use, so 401. All good now. And click next. All networks, next. It's running the final validation. And create. So the deployment has started now. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once this deployment is done. Deployment is successful now. And let's go to Azure OpenAI service, which is deployed in East US2. And now we'll go to Azure AI Foundry to deploy the base model. Azure AI Foundry. And if we'll go down, there is an option of deployment. So click on deployments and deploy a base model. And let's look for real time. And there is an audio generation model, which is GPT-40 real time preview. So let's click here, confirm. And it's available in East US2 region. So that's good. And deploy. So the model is deployed now and we have the endpoint as well as the key here. As I have already mentioned that we will be integrating this Azure OpenAI real-time API with Twilio Voice so that all the different API calls for the incoming as well as the response can be handled using the Python code. So first of all, let's go to Twilio website. Twilio. And this is their official website. So if you are visiting their website first time, then you have to sign up. And once you will sign up, you can create a free account and you will get a US phone number with that. So I have already done that. I'll click on login. I'll just quickly log in. Now I'm logged into Twilio console. So as you can see, I have a trial account but I can upgrade this account uh, though I don't need to because I'm in Australia, I don't want a US number. 
So as you can see here, using the free account or trial account, you get one US phone number. So I have got this number. Now if you go down, if you click on the verified phone numbers, it provides me one active number. And this is my active number. And by clicking here, you can make some configuration changes. Now let's go to VS Code and check our application which we are going to deploy. I have the application files ready. So let's see what we are going to use. So we are going to use the fast API, which is API for HTTP or WebSockets. So we are going to use it with the Twilio voice and we are going to install the Twilio package too. Then the WebSockets is for Azure OpenAI real-time API connections, .env for loading the environment variables, which we'll save it in .env where we need to provide the open API key and open API endpoint. And then the UVCon, it, and it's a gateway server which is created to run the Python web application. Now if we'll go to the application.py, so first we are importing all these packages related to WebSockets, Fast API, and Twilio, and then we are loading the .env file. So let's provide the open API key and open API endpoint here. Or let's go to Azure AI Foundry and copy the endpoint URL. I'll provide a bracket. However, instead of HTTPS, I'll provide WSS so that it's the web socket secure. WSS and for the key, I'll copy the key and don't worry about the key. I'll just delete it before uploading this video. So let's save it. Let's go back to our application app.py and it's going to use port 5050. You can even change it. So, but 5050 is fine. And I have created a system message. So it's acting as a medical center receptionist. So which will collect some details like doctor name, caller's name, phone number, and desired appointment date and time. And then provide us in the JSON format in the logs itself. So that in the code, we can add an action and based on the action, we can make changes in the planner or different third party applications. But in this video, we are just focusing on the integration with the Twilio voice and we are not going to add any action here. So the voice type, so this is real time API settings and different logs, which we are creating. Then we are initiating the fast API so that the connection can be established. And when we'll run the web application, it will just say the application is running. And for the incoming call, if we send the post request, then it will start the incoming conversation. Same with the media server where it handled the WebSocket connection between Twilio and OpenAI. And we have to provide the OpenAI endpoint and the key as the additional header here. Then the connection specific state. So we receive the audio and then send it to OpenAI real time API and then the response is generated. And then the OpenAI real-time API sends back the audio to Twilio. And the best part is it happens in the real time and there is no lag in it. So all these are Twilio settings. So how the speech will be handled. And if you want to provide the initial conversation, so I have provided that too, that I'm Jane from Medical Center. How can I assist you? And all those details are provided. And finally, your application will be running on local host and the port number will be 5050. Let's start with the virtual environment creation in the Python so that we don't have any dependency clash. Python M V E N V virtual environment. So it will create a folder for the virtual environment and then we'll activate the virtual environment once it's done. So the folder is created and let's activate the virtual environment. And you have to go in this folder, venv, then scripts, then activate and run this and it will activate the virtual environment. And you can see here, venv is in the start. So now we are in the virtual environment. First thing we have to do is install all the dependencies. pip install r requirements.txt, a file which is created. So this will install all the dependencies. Let's wait for it. All the dependencies are successfully installed now. And now to run this app locally, what we have to do is Python app.py. 
and now the application is running locally so let's go to the browser localhost 5050 is the port number and you can see the application is running however if we'll go to the console of the twilio we have to provide the url but we can't provide a local url we need a public url so there are two options here either using an ngrok package you can provide a public endpoint mapping which is very easy but then the application will be running on your laptop itself or a local server this is good for testing and another one is you deploy this application into a web app in azure so let's stop this now and deploy this application into the azure web app so let's go to azure go to app service create a web app I'll use the same resource group RG phone and let's name the web app as Shalinda EST app 01 and the runtime we'll use the Python 3.12 Linux is okay and let's use the same region East US 2 and let's deploy the premium v3 so that we have enough memory we don't need the zone redundancy, just review and create and we'll create this application. Validation is successful and I'll create it now. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once this is done. Web app is created now. Let's go to the resource. So this is our web app. Web app is running now. So let's click on browse. And perfect, it's providing the default page. Now let's go back to the VS code. And if you have installed the extension app services, so there is an app service extension. So if you have that, there will be an option Azure. So click there. And you have to sign in into your subscription. And once you will sign in, you will see all the resources. So if we'll open this and in the app services, this is the app service and when you right click on it, there's an option of deploy to web app and you have to choose which folder to be deployed. So we'll just click on the phone and yes, I would like to deploy and deploy. So it's going to deploy to the web app now. Timing when the application is getting deployed, what we want is that we have to provide the environment variables. So let's go to the web app. And in the web app, there is an option of environment variables. Let's provide these environment variables here. So add connection. So open API key. and the key value. Apply, then the endpoint. And let's copy this and apply and then finally apply so that the changes are reflected and this will restart your application. And if you'll see here that the deployment is successful. So let's go back here, go to overview. And it's running. Now we have made the environment variable changes. We have deployed the application. Now the third and the most important step is go to the configuration and provide the startup step, how the application should start. So in it's a Python application. So let's provide the startup command, python app.py, simple. Let's save this. This will restart the application. And let's see if it's running or not.
and perfect. You can see that now the application is running. So if we'll just quickly check the incoming call. So that is also working. Perfect. So now the next step is we have the public URL. Let's go to Twilio voice and in the webhook provide this URL with incoming call. Now save this. And it's saved now. And perfect. Now to see what's the output is, let's quickly go to the log stream. So let's go to Twilio console and this is the number plus one, five seven zero. 5338128 and as you can see this is the number let me call on this number you have a trial account you can remove this message at any time by upgrading to a full account press any key to execute your code i'll press one now please wait while we connect your call to medical center okay you can start talking hello there I am Jane from Medical Center. How can I assist you today? Hi, this is Shalinda, and I would like to book an appointment with Dr. Ryan. Of course. When would you like to schedule your appointment? And could you please provide me with your phone number? Yes, tomorrow 9 a.m. and my phone number is 12345678. Thank you. So as you can see in the transcription, it got the doctor's name my name though i didn't get it correct and it's because of my accent and the phone number and appointment date and time now your application has this information and once you get this information you can pass this json into an action and with the python hooks or connectors you can connect to the different applications uh, and the tools and you can make changes based on the voice conversation and that's pretty cool and a successful deployment now you can think about the endless use cases where we can use this and provide the first level response. There are multiple options in the IVR you can choose. If you'll choose two, then it will transfer to the human or otherwise for scheduling appointment and all these can be taken care of using the voice conversation itself. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.